I finally have a day off. Can I consider having a night off as a day off? Because it's been intense. I've been working in several productions at the same time and one is overlapping the other. Um, so I kind of have a gap where I am only working in one production <laughs> and it feels like I have so much free time. So I am um, finished with the games of foot. Uh, and these are the gifts that they gave me. Uh, the actors were such a delight to work with and the production went so well that I kind of miss it now that it's over. It was, it was a lot of work, but um, it was very smooth and it ended out great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of everybody's work. So that was very cool, but now that I have some free time, I officially declare opening the season of Chemise à la Reine. And this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to um, pattern. I already pat the mannequin very roughly. We did that in a live video that we were doing a Zoom meeting with everybody that are creating their own um a gown for the October ball uh, and if you are not aware of that I'm going to put uh, more information on the description I am so sorry for not being advertising that it's just that we are kind of sold out but uh, you can always get into the waiting list the ball is going to be in October uh, in St. Louis so it's right in the middle of the country and uh, it's pretty fun. Everybody's gonna come um, and it's going to be really amazing. I have not started my dress yet, but today's not the day. Today is the day that we're going to do the chemise, the chemise à la reine. Oh, and I totally forgot to say that I still need to upload uh, my travel to Saint Genevieve. Um, it was amazing as well and I have some new things to show and I promised them uh, to, te to teach step by step of a bag gown or a banyan so that's what we're doing next but since I don't have much time and the sun is gonna go down I just want to uh, get started with this um, easy pattern um, that at least we can do the foundations today on this 18th century French fashion plates, uh, we can see the gown right here. This is a chemise line, and we're going to do pretty much like this, but instead of being pink, it's going to be white because I don't know. I feel like the white cotton with extremely, extremely thin um, cambraia or lawn fabric is just so deliciously rococo and quintessential um, garment of this period that I feel like, I don't know, I could make one in another color, but the white ones are my favorite. <laughs> I'm going to use this um, towel that I have been using before for a skirt. Um, so I'm going to reuse it once again, once again to drag this top. And this is how I like it. I really like reusing everything. That way I don't create more trash in the world. Sadly, this is plastic, but I really like it because it's a little bit stronger um, than everything else that I have used so far. Uh, it is very thin and lightweight. Um, that works kind of like uh, fabric. Not as well, but it's way more affordable than to create a whole muslin um, for any client. So that way I can still drape and they will get a chance to see how their clothes are gonna look like. And I also have a chance to see how the clothes are gonna look like, but in a more affordable way that is also not creating a ton amount of trash.
The downside is that it doesn't have a grain, so you have to be extremely um, careful with whatever you're draping because it has no grain. Um, it doesn't hang differently like the fabric would because of its grain being cross grain or being biased. Uh, so this has absolutely no bias so it will not drape as beautifully it will not give you the exact idea because again it's not fabric but I don't know I feel like for a base layer like this it's good enough and it's see-through that I can easily see all of the lines that um all of these guidelines and that way I'm not uh, as afraid of cutting and wasting material because this is something that I use all the time so even if I kind of make a mistake I can still save it and I will use it another time in a different part of the of a dress or a detail or maybe I'll plan the embroidery on a layer and then it's easy to trace over so it's just very endless uh, opportunities that I have with this material. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this kind of dress. I don't want to give a full history background on it because I feel like many other YouTubers have already gone in depth. Um, so I don't know, maybe you guys want to check their videos as well. Um, but these are some remarks that I would like to say. Um, this is from Fashion, The Definitive History and Style um, by authors Catherine Hennessy and Anna Fischel. This says, Fashionable in the 1780s, this garment was the forerunner of less of later neoclassical dress. The style, a tube of cotton muslin with a drawstring at the neck and a sash at the waist, grew popular throughout Europe. And the famous portrait of Marie Antoinette uh, that is at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington uh, really helped popularize this garment that at the time was called uh, robe, robe and chemise and that was because uh, this robe, this kind of dress um, was just looking like a chemise so it was just called chemise dress but after the queen wore it, it started to be called the chemise à la reine or uh, the shift dress from the queen and that's what the name means today. In survey of historic costume, Phyllis says, chemise à la reine was a white muslin gown that resembled the chemise undergarments of the period but unlike the chemise, it had a waistline and a soft fully gathered skirt. skirt. This garment made of very costly muslin imported from India was a forerunner of styles of the beginning of the 19th century. And if you are familiar with anything from Regency period, you would see that it is very, very similar. Um, and there are a couple of different styles. This one that I'm doing is late 18th century so it has base and then a top layer.
I am also very satisfied how the lines meet at the back. I think it's going to give a lovely figure. I am hoping to base this one on the Manchester City Gallery's extent. It is such a beautiful example of 18th century fashion and I have detailed pictures of the inside and outside of this garment and I am absolutely in love with um, this construction. So it's going to be very fun. I love working in things that I also admire and find pleasure in doing it. It's such a such a joy. So I have here uh, this green sharpie with ultra fine points that I'm going to just be lazy with it and I'm going to trace over here and over this line because this will be my pattern for the flap that goes here uh, to set the sleeve. I'm going to have this and together this will be another pattern but first I'm gonna cut front and back and then once I have that I can just trace this to another uh, another piece of the fabric and I'll add the seam allowances and this will go on top of everything. I'm going to make the second pattern for uh, the front and the chemise using this. Um, so I'm just going to alter that and once I have base and top layer cut then I'll place the sleeves and I'll cover with that and that's it. <laughs> This shirt will be done and then I'm going to go for uh, the skirt and the skirt piece is very easy because it's just a rectangle. This is it. <laughs> Look at this little guy here. Okay, so this is it. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.